everybody, and welcome to week two of COVID confirmation. Thank you for tuning in and for hanging in there with us. Uh, like Pastor Justin said last week, we know that you are spending uh, just a ton of time looking at your screens these days, and so we're going to try and keep this pretty short today, just about 20 minutes front to back. So for those of you who are keeping track of time, you can go ahead and start those timers now. I'll start mine too. Okay. Uh, so the first piece of business is that for those of you who are watching these videos and filling out um, the follow-up questions in the Google Forms, you are being entered uh, to win a weekly drawing for your chance um, for a chance to win some Lulu Bucks. So thank you to all of those who participated last week. Some of you participated two or three times with <laughs> duplicate Google Forms, um, trying to game the system I see there. Um, but not to worry, we uh, remove the duplicates. And we do have three people who will be receiving 10 Lulu Bucks for their, for their participation. And those people are Liam Imes, Eliana Marcus, and Blake Ryman. So the three of you, uh, congratulations. You can look forward to a gift card coming in the mail sometime soon. And for the rest of you, you are um, 52 seconds into becoming next week's participation winner. If you remember back to last week, remember that Pastor Justin talked about creation, and instead of just retelling the creation stories in Genesis that I'm sure you all know pretty well at this point, um, he talked about the ongoing creative work of God in our world today. So sure, uh, God created the world and the animals and the humans in the world all those years ago, but um, God also created you and your families and your pets and your siblings and your parents, and God continues to be this uh, creative force and active presence in our world today. So last week's assignment, if you remember back, was to talk to your parents and to tell a story about your family or about um, someone in your family. And I want you to remember those stories now because we're going to bring them back out and dive into them a little bit deeper this week. Uh, that's because just like the creation stories, the stories that you tell about your families have um, meanings and lessons and values hidden in them. Right, so uh, think about these creation stories in Genesis. Like, we don't necessarily believe that God literally created the world in seven days like we would count the seven days of the week. And we don't read the Bible as a set of facts, um, like maybe the way we would read a science textbook. Um, but that doesn't mean that there's not truths and lessons about what it means to be a human living in God's creation kind of baked into those stories. Um, you know, so, uh, like, let's say it didn't take seven days for God to create the earth, but the story does tell us that at the end of those seven days, God called the earth good, and um, we learn from that that God intended creation to be good and beautiful and meant for us to enjoy living. Um, or take, for example, the story of Adam and Eve. Like, you know, the story uh, isn't an accurate account of events the exact way that it happened, but the story does tell us uh, important truths about who we are as sinful fallen humans and about who God is as a gracious, loving God who cares for us anyway. Do you see how these stories that we tell ourselves um, can be filled kind of with these nuggets of wisdom about who we are, um, how the world works, and how we should live? So if you think back to those stories that you told about your family last week, did you remember your story? Um, I want you to think about this week for your assignment um, what is the lesson or the value that might be hidden in that story? What does your family's story teach you about what's valuable in life? What does it teach you about how the world works? Um, or what does it teach you about how you want to act or don't want to act um, in your life and in your family? So let me give you an example. Uh, when I was watching last week's, vi last week's video, I was thinking about um, my, the, Anderson, the annual Anderson family reunion with my mom's side of the family. It's been going on my whole life, and uh, it's honestly gotten a little bit out of control over the years. So uh, it starts on Saturday morning when the whole family wakes up at like 7 a.m., and we all gather together on the lake shore, and we point towards the flag, and we sing the national anthem. But not just the American national anthem, we also sing the national anthem of Sweden and Switzerland, because there are usually people who have traveled from Sweden and Switzerland in attendance with us. And then we wade into the cold water, and someone says, on your market set, go, and everyone starts swimming towards a buoy in the middle of the lake. And that's because a staple of this family reunion is a competitive family triathlon, where like 20 people ages 13 to 70 compete in a competitive swim, bike, and run. And there are winners, and uh, we do keep track of times. 
And we even have a family website where we display all of the individual results dating back to like 1995. And my favorite part is that over the years it's caught on and um, other families on this lake have started holding their own family triathlons on the same day that we hold ours. And so what I learned about uh, my family and the world and about myself in this story, this is what we're asking you to do this week with your stories. Um, so what I learned is that, well, first my family is competitive and that they want you to participate and they value participation, but they also reward you for doing um, the best that you can every time you participate. So there are winners in the triathlon, there aren't really losers, but there are winners and participants. I also learned another example is that um, especially as other families started holding their own triathlons, I learned that um, people are watching even when you don't know that they are. And so for myself, I, I learned that I, um, I, I better be acting in a way that I would be okay with others observing and copying. And I'll give you one more example. Um, my family has taught me uh, that it is expected and important that you show up for one another. Um, so people are flying over from Sweden and Switzerland for this reunion. And not everyone likes the triathlon, and not everyone participates in the triathlon, but everyone shows up because we have decided that that's important for us to be together as a family in that way. So I gave you three examples. We're just asking you to give us one um, about those stories that you told. Um, so go ahead and head on over to that Google form now. There will be a couple questions for you to answer there. And let's see how we're doing on time. I have six minutes about, so you'll have about... 14 minutes uh, to answer those questions. And then just a quick reminder for next week that next week is Thanksgiving. Um, we won't have a video up for confirmation, but you will be receiving something in the mail this next week with um, an assignment or activity um, that will take place of our regular confirmation time next week. So keep an eye out for that. Stay safe and healthy. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving break. And um, that's all I have this week. Bye.